hit record and then we'll just chat about whatever comes All up. All right. <laughs> Love it. You good? Yeah. All right. All right, everyone. Well, this is Sandcast. Uh, by the time this one comes out, it'll be 2023. Wow. Um, so this is actually Jaden Whitmarsh. You are our first guest of the 2023 season. Wow. Lucky me. Welcome aboard. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Appreciate you making the trip. Thank you. Although, as we talked about, it was a convenient trip yeah. for you. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> um, but you grew up down in, uh, in San Diego, right? Yes. Yep. Born and raised. And San Diego is an absolute powerhouse of young beach volleyball talent because yeah. did, did you go to high school with Megan Craft and Delaney yep Mayfield? Torrey Pines High School that's insane yep I know there's been a lot of people that have come out of Torrey Pines no kidding and Savvy Sima that, too is, oh Sav went yeah, there too yeah oh, I didn't know you guys went to high school together yeah she's just well, a couple years older than she's me. not here I know <laughs> Damn. I know so is Torrey Pines a public high school it is yeah. that's crazy that they got all that talent without recruiting or anything. I know. Yeah. Um, it's usually Torrey Pines High School, Cathedral Catholic, and uh, La Costa Canyon are okay. like the three pretty competitive high schools gotcha. in the area. So. And you guys have – beach volleyball is a high school sport in all of California or just kind of select spots? Um, I think mostly all of California that I know of. Okay. Um. But yeah, our uh, Torrey Pines High School team was pretty competitive. No um, <laughs> yeah, we did pretty well. We would uh, uh, we won CIF. I'm pretty sure like a couple of the years. I think maybe two years, and then made it to semifinals of state, which was our okay. big thing. But um, yeah, those were the high school indoor days. So. Yeah. What's um? I'm not from California, so like, what's the difference between CIF and state? Um, CIF is, or state is like, like a bunch of teams from all over in the California. So, um, it's kind of like the bigger, it was like, uh, what is it? Like regionals and then CIF and state. And if you made, if you won state, that was like the biggest. That's the biggie. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the, the one of them all, the big one, but, okay. um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Delaney and Megan's team actually won state for the first okay. time for Torrey Pines. And so, like, that was a huge deal. Gotcha. So, yeah. Because being from Maryland, our state's so small that we don't – we just, it's just state. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just – you have your qualifier. I guess ours is conferences, which might be the equivalent of CIF. Yeah. And then if you do well enough in your conference, you qualify for the exactly. state tournament. And then yeah. that's the biggie. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And did, yeah. did you, like, always – have high school beach volleyball as a possibility i feel like that's a relatively new thing yeah it was uh, high school beach volleyball was a little bit less competitive at the time i mean it's only growing now but um yeah when i played it was more just kind of for fun and we yeah. would play against people and or uh, different high schools and stuff in the area but it wasn't as i guess serious or competitive as the indoor um sport at the time gotcha yeah and what position were you indoor? I was an outside hitter, believe it or not. 5'7", <laughs> five, 5'8", five, five, with shoes on maybe. But yeah, I was outside hitter um, and yeah, I loved it. I was able to hit and um, compete in that level. But yeah, I, growing up, they would put me as libero because I was little. And then um, I kept telling my coaches, I was like, I really want to hit. Like, give me Spoken like a chance. Like a true libero. Exactly. I was like, <laughs> please, just like let me try. And it took a lot of work, but um, ended up getting kind of good at it. I got yeah. a starting spot. So, um, yeah, I sometimes I miss my indoor days, just the team, yeah. team culture, you know. Like. I think I feel like that's the biggest uh, thing that beach players miss about indoor yeah. is that team culture. But it's so I love the college format because it is individualistic, but it is a team at the same time. Exactly. And sometimes that can produce like these dichotomous emotions where if you win your match, but your team loses, yeah. you're like let's. I don't know how to feel. Oh, and then yeah. if you lose your own match, but your team wins, exactly. you're kind of bummed, but kind of stoked at the exactly. same time. Exactly. <laughs> I know. Oh, I've had many of those moments where if I lose and I know I had a bad game, but my team won, I'm like, oh, I still feel like pretty bad, but yeah. like great for my team. But yeah, that was definitely an adjustment um, going from indoor to beach. But um, like I, I would say like mostly in high school, the thing I loved the most about indoor was just having my team because 
while I was playing beach in high school, it was just kind of like on my own training and like, yeah, I had wave, um, beach volleyball club, which was amazing, but I still felt like my indoor team was like my, my crew, you know, Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, (laughs) I remember two of the most intense college beach matches I've watched you've been a part of. Hmm. It was, uh, was it a quarterfinal or semifinal against, uh, LSU? Oh, two I jumped, years ago. Two years ago. Oh, yeah. That was the quarterfinal. Okay. Well, yeah. I think it was, uh, you were playing with Riley yeah. Powers? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And yeah. I remember that went three. And it's so fun watching in golf shores because everyone's just sprinting to whoever's oh course last and yes. you guys were last. It's like, this is intense. <laughs> like, this is fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I was just talking about this with, uh, with Riley the other day, but. Um, that season, it came down to our court, like yeah. a weird amount. Like I'm <laughs> sure like, I think it was like three or four times. And that was actually the first year that I made the lineup. So I was like new to, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like I'm just a baby. Like, yeah. I don't want this to come down to me. <laughs> yeah. Like my seniors, like whatever. And, um, yeah, I, we just, I remember them on the loudspeakers, like, all right, coming down to court five. And Riley and I looked at each other and we were like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then we like looked down the beach and there's all these LSU fans like running with flags and yeah. like everyone's going to our court. And I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah. It's time to get down to business. So. And how do you respond? Like when you hear that on the loudspeaker, mm-hmm. it's all coming down to court five, Jaden Whitmarsh and Riley Powers. How do you respond? Because you kept finding yourself in those situations, but I feel like you responded very well every time. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I would say that we got used to it in a weird way, but also it was just like, how cool is this? Like we're put in this position to like, I don't know, win this for our team. Yeah. And, um, we, we would just like look at each other, like make eye, eye contact and be like, all right, like it's you and me versus the other two, like, everything else is just noise and, um, we're just going to do what we can and we're giving our, obviously our hundred percent and whatever happens, happens. And yeah. we actually just, I mean, we did pull out some big wins, but how cool is it to say that like, yeah, we were the deciding factor. Like, the anchor. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. So I think that gave us a lot of confidence and especially me just that was my first year making the lineup. I think that really helped me for sure. Yeah. Long run. You've had a, an interesting college career, just the timing of it. Oh, yeah. Because you're a graduate student now, right? Yeah, fifth year, but this is only, I'm going into my third right. season playing. So how much more eligibility do you have? You have this one, obviously. Yeah, and then I technically have a sixth year. Okay. So, yeah, it's definitely up in the air if I'm yeah. going to do that. I just feel like um, I get my head set one way. I'm like, okay, I'm going to totally be fine to be right. done after this. But, again, it is only my th- going into my third season of playing and we'll see how I feel, but yeah, definitely don't know exactly yet. Yeah. And no reason to make a decision yet anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, cause you're what your freshman year was supposed to be 2019. <sighs> yes. 2019. And that's when I redshirted. Um, my team was absolutely incredible. Um, no kidding. yeah, we had Sarah Sponsel on court two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's if that's not wise. saying anything about our team, <laughs> Sarah Sponsel on the twos, but, um, yeah, we had Sarah Sponsel, Zana Munio, um, the McNamara Twins, and Izzy Carey as our senior class. That's so not bad. Really, yeah, we had a really good team. And um, so, yeah, I decided to fre- redshirt my freshman year just because um, I had a little, a lot of learning to do, yeah. um, which was a great decision. And then sophomore year was the COVID year, so we didn't get yeah. a season. So, um, again, junior year was the first year I got to actually compete. So. Yeah. But you were probably pretty antsy. To play. Uh, Oh, yeah. I honestly, it's weird to say, but like the timing of COVID was kind of good for me. Um, I got to go home and train a lot. And um, I still got to do some practice sessions with like some people like whenever I could. Mm -hmm. And I just had a lot of time to just like, I don't know, like prepare on the details. And like Stein really wanted me to like, um, I'm not like change my offense, but just like like perfect. I don't know what the word is, but like add more tools to my game and be more creative with my shots and stuff Mm -hmm. because of obviously my height, um, alters, but I don't know. Um, I got a lot more time to kind of like 
get back into playing the game. I obviously wanted to make the starting lineup, so yeah, I did everything I could. And then when I got back, I was like, all right, let's go. Yeah. So that two year preparation phase, if like frustrating as it probably felt at times, yeah, was probably so good for your game because one, I'm curious what it was like to be learning from the McNamara's on court one, yeah, Sponsel and Lily on two, yeah. Uh, Abby Van Winkle is yeah. starting. She played with Zana mm-hmm. on three. Yeah. And Izzy Carey, who I think is still UCLA's all-time wins leader. Yeah. Just cruising on, on court five, five all day long. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, my freshman year was honestly like one of my – each year has been great, and I've had different, obviously, experiences and, like, stories, I guess, with, with each year. But my freshman year is so, like, I don't know, clear my mind just because I got there – and I was, like, coming from youth volleyball and thinking, like, oh, I'm, like, the best. I'm yeah. really good, whatever. And then I, I get to UCLA, and it was just such a wake-up call. Like, I remember being, like, <laughs> yeah. what team am I on? Like, yeah. this is crazy. And I just remember, like, taking a step back and just, like, trying to absorb as much as I could from the players I was getting to compete against at practice and stuff. And also from all the advice and the coaching from Stein and Jenny and, like, Honestly, it was, like, such a huge year for me. I, I learned probably, like, the most that year. Yeah. Just from watching. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. And it's it's so cool because, I mean, your teammates are obviously world-class. Sponsor went on to the Olympics. She's won an AVP. Mm-hmm. Lily, I think, had the talent yeah. to win AVPs or contend for, for them. Sure. The McNamara's are making their own little Olympic run. And then adding on top of that, you had Stein, yeah. Jenny, and then what volunteers have you had? You had Jose, We've had a lot. Yeah, Jose. Jeremy, um, Maria? yes. Yep. And then we have Sean Fallowfield now. Okay. Um, and, um, Irene. Okay. Irene Pollock. Or, Love Irene. Yeah. I know. She's great. I haven't seen her in a long time. I know. Did she move? I know she, once she started having kids, she yeah. just like, had two or three rounds. I was like, wait, you're pregnant again? Irene? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I think they might be in San Diego. I'm not sure. Okay. I also haven't really talked to her in a while, but each assistant or, um, yeah, assistant we've had has been great in their own ways. Um, just each year it's been different. Like Jose, especially our, um, when we had him as our assistant, we overall just became a lot better of a blocking team. Okay. And um, I learned a lot about my offense from him too, just – like oh, obviously the Jose is amazing and he's full of like tips and tricks and, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he was on my he was like our coach for a lot of the season. Okay. So his positivity and energy like was perfect for me. It's like exactly what I needed. So yeah, yeah, it's very cool and it's cool just to see like how fast the youth game has changed. I mean, youth meaning you know high school on up to college. Because so Delaney, I don't know if you've ever met. My wife, Delaney. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't met her, but I, I know her. Because she, she was hilarious because she wasn't recruited at all coming out of high school. Mm-hmm. She sent Nina Matthews, the coach at Pepperdine at the time, uh, just a random tape of her playing indoor. Mm-hmm. And then said, hey, we just beat this team. So Nina perked up and said, okay, cool. And she ended up getting a full ride offer just wow. on a, an indoor tape. Wow. And she had never had any coaching as a kid. Wow. And that wasn't that long ago that she was a freshman at Pepperdine. She was a freshman in 2014. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. And eight years later, it's nuts how, I mean, you have like 11-year-olds who can break pool and CBVA opens. I know. I know. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> and just watching sort of, I mean, your generation really come up with the Megan Crafts, the Landon yeah. Maples, yeah. the Sponsel. It's cool to see just how freaking good all you guys are right now. <laughs> and it had to have been fun growing up on the beach, as I'm sure you will probably witness the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I feel like growing up and competing against, like, some of the girls that now are, like, the best of the best at all these colleges, it's just so cool being like, oh, I know you. Like, I've, yeah. I've played with you, like, all my life, and now you're going on to play in AVPs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's just it's cool to see the game, like, growing like before our eyes and like being a part of it too is just like one of the coolest things and um yeah I think it's only growing more I think it's gonna continue to go on for a long time so yeah and it's it's never had a problem being big in California but have you watched it grow and expand in numbers outside of the state as well (sighs) yeah I feel like there's definite um like beach volleyball states that are like a little bit more ahead 
just obviously because of weather conditions and stuff yeah. like that. But like the Floridas and um, Texas, um, those are the big ones. But um, yeah, we have we're starting to get like more girls from other states, which has mm-hmm. been cool. Just because I feel like in years past, it's all been like SoCal and like some NorCal, yeah. but um, it's been cool getting to see more Florida girls come, Texas, mm-hmm. like like people from all over, which I think only helps the team. Yeah. So. And you guys, I mean, Stein hit the jackpot with his Florida bunch. Yeah. And bring in <laughs> Riley, Lexi, Lexi. Is, and who else? Is there another one from Florida? Um, we have Marley, who was a okay. transfer, but she played indoor at Florida. But I remember Tim Brewster, uh-huh. he, he told me, he's like, listen, when Riley Powers <laughs> and Lexi Denenberg get here, you need to go watch them play because yeah. they're a beast. Yeah. And then I watched them play. I was like, they play like they're about 22 <laughs> and they're 18. I know. <laughs> Especially <laughs> Lexi. You should, like, that girl works harder than anyone I've ever seen it in shows. my life. Oh my God. It absolutely <laughs> She's does. A monster. I know. Like, she's playing on the ones for so many years. Yeah. Just like, uh, she just, in everything she does, she puts in 100, 110%. And she's like the best leader and just like inspires everyone and, and her energy is contagious. So, um, yeah, she's been great to have on the team just for the overall success, but also she's just a great girl. So it's been so fun. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's gotta be unique just in how individual, but a team sport it is mm-hmm. and how someone can become a leader. So, I mean, in basketball, you could be a good on court leader right. and you're directing everyone right. on the court, but that's not really the case in beach. Yeah. So how, how would someone be a, a good leader at the college beach level? Um, I feel like it definitely ranges from team to team, but, um, in my experience on our team, the, the team culture has been something that has been, um, implemented from like the girls before us, Mm -hmm. like they kind of started this thing and now it's kind of like an expectation, but it's also just like, is what makes our team like super close. And I feel like the whole leader thing, um, I guess comes with maybe experience and also just like respect. And there's also like many different kinds of leaders on our team, I would say. Um, Like, obviously, there's, like, the Lexi, who she, like, will work hard and, like, make you want to work really hard. And then there's, like, girls that will be at practice and are, like, the motivators, like, the talkers and, like, you know. But I think um, our team is cool because, like, we all just love each other so much. And it's, like, you could really go up to any girl on the team. And if you need, like, help with something, you need advice, like, you can literally turn to the girl next to you and like, they'll be there to yeah. talk. So I think that's cool on our team, but it's very cool. Cause Stein, I feel like does such a good job of recruiting some of the most competitive women I've met in my life, Yeah, but who also get along with each other. I know those are two hard traits to put together. <laughs> Cause when you, the, I mean, watching Devin Newberry play, yeah. if you are not for her, you are against Devin Newberry <laughs> and she will talk trash and stare <laughs> you down all day long. It's true. Sponsor is one of the most competitive people oh, yeah. I've ever met. I know firsthand how competitive Lexi is because yeah. Lexi actually played with Delaney in New Orleans right. this year on the AVP. Um, I've heard that you're very competitive and just your little spark plug out there too <laughs> watching you. It's very fun because you bring so much energy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering just how Stein is able to find all these very competitive people who are competing yeah. for roster spots because yeah. it's not only getting in the lineup, but it's where you are in the lineup I know it's is true. a very competitive thing as well. How does he make that happen? Um, well, I think, again, it, it falls back into our team culture. And I think, like, we have, like, a lot of talks with our team about, like, yes, we are competing against each other for these spots and everything, but that should – that's on the court. And then once we're off the court, we're, like, back to all being best friends. And, like, in the end, like, we all just want the best for each other. And it's important to push each other and – and work hard for for these volleyball like pairs and spots but at the end of the day like we're we all have the same end goal and we all just want the best for each other and the team and the program so that's what it kind of comes down to yeah you guys have been so young the last couple years did you lose anyone from this past year we well we graduated two um one uh starting so okay. we have a lot of so returners bringing nine starters back yes and we have a couple of really good transfers coming. Two Oof. two joining us in January and okay. one joined us uh, in the fall. Okay. Who's coming? Um, Haley Hallgren. 
That's who, a good pickup. I know. That's she's. That's a tough transfer I going know. from USC to UCLA. I know. Yep. So she. <laughs> I didn't know she transferred. Yeah. So well, she actually just did her fifth year at um, Michigan. Okay. Uh, indoor. Played indoors, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and now she's coming back to beach and joining the good side. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're really excited to have her. That's gonna be great. Um, and then we have another indoor girl, Reagan Hope. Okay. Um, she was at Oregon, and okay. she's a sophomore this year. So that will be huge for us long term for the program because yeah. I think she'll have three more years. Um, but yeah, them joining us in January, and then we got Kelly Green Agnew who joined us in from fall. LSU. Yep. Awesome. So yeah. You have nine returning starters from your own team, and then Haley started for I think four years. Yeah. At USC, and then yeah. Kelly. I mean, she's been a mainstay at LSU for a exactly. while. So you have eleven starting yeah. players that's not even including <laughs> awesome. the freshmen and <laughs> yeah. The, yeah we honestly we have a pretty good team this year and I'm really excited to see how everyone gels together and I yeah. just can't wait for season honestly I bet yeah and especially because like your your career will come back to it but it's it's been so funny I was reading your bio at UCLA and your 2020 year you went like three and oh yeah and the bio was like one of four players on the team to go undefeated yeah. in the whole season <laughs> I'm like okay yeah. those three yeah. games were really crazy like, no. yeah. oh. but right. it's got to be exciting for you to have a second full season especially coming in not that you're ever assured a roster spot, but yeah. you played very well last year. You're on court two. Yeah. Well, court three and then worked up to court two with Devin. Yeah. Um, so it's got to be exciting for you. You've got a roster spot. You have experience. You know you can come down to, in the clutch if need oh, yeah. be. Uh-huh. It's probably a very fun time for you right now. For sure. Um, yeah. I Honestly, this winter break has been great to spend time with family and be home, but I'm like kind of itching to get back like yeah. to training and being with my team and um, I think we have the chance to win this year. And I think that only fuels the fire more. Like we want to come in like thinking underdog mentality and like just going hard against every single team because we know we're going to get everyone's best game. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really excited to get back for this season. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. Do you guys still go by uh, skinny dogs? <laughs> skinny dogs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the the uh, sl- uh, what's it called slogans kind of change every single year. Yeah, just with the uh, the different teams and the different like journeys and it's kind of like the inside jokes. But yeah, yeah, each year we have definitely some sort of. Um, thing, but skinny dogs, that's yeah. funny. Devin that Newberry funny. was cracking me up when she was uh, talking about that. Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> that one. That's a really good one. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, what role do you see yourself playing on this year's team? Because you're a graduate student, you've been yeah. around for a while, you know what works, probably seen some things that don't work. Right. Um, I would say this year, um, well, personally, I'm just going to want to, if this is my last year, I want to just soak it all in and like obviously just be grateful for every single game and opportunity that we get um but I think it is gonna come down to just being like now that I am an experienced player just kind of like making the newcomers like feel super welcome and super just like comfortable and making sure everyone is um like on the same page um and then obviously like I have a kind of a competitive side and I like to like fire everyone up so that comes a lot with like energy on the court and um yeah by now we we definitely know what we need to do to win and we've had our tough losses and so using those to fuel the fire and just prepare even more um is going to be helpful for sure yeah one of the uh the topics that comes up a lot just with players of all types be professional college is sort of discovering your personality on the court Mm -hmm. uh you seem to be a very energetic kind of player but i'm wondering if you have had to experiment with a couple different styles Mm -hmm. of just how you act on the court before you kind of found what worked well for you right um so yeah so something at ucla that's been or i don't know if it's ucla or just my team but we take this personality test it's called like the enneagram test okay and there's like uh, a, a questionnaire of like I think 150 questions, like a bunch of questions. Yeah. And it, um, it shows you a list of like, um, kind of the category you fall into. There's like a two, seven, three and like all this stuff. And, um, mine is called the helper, which, um, 
it relates a lot to how I feel outside of volleyball, um, which is just like I like relationships and friendships and like connecting with people and um, all this stuff. And then on the court, it, it says like under stress, like where you go. And it takes me to the one that's called the challenger. Okay. And I totally like agree with that. <laughs> like I just turn into like, especially if I get like a little angry or like, yeah. I don't know, ref makes a bad call. Like I like flip a switch and I'm like, let's go. Like, like so focused <laughs> and like fired up. It's crazy. Cause like, I don't know. It's just a competitive side of me, but um, I've definitely had moments where that like can make me too fired up and like and yeah. start to make it like um, mistakes and stuff. But I definitely need to have a little bit of fuel and fire under under my belt to put me in like my good zone. Yeah. So how can you? So you mentioned you know say a ref calls a double, it's not a double. Yeah. That'll get you fired up. But say if, if the ref is calling a game perfectly. Yeah. The opponent isn't talking trash. How can you put yourself into that zone? That's a good question. Well, I feel like every time I step onto the court, like, essentially I want to win. And that just comes with my competitive nature. But um, I I just like the fact that I'm able to, like, connect with my partner and have it be, like, me and you versus, like, the other side. Mm -hmm. No matter if, like, the people on the other side of the net are, like, my friends or, like, I respect them, which I usually do, and I actually do know a lot of people that I compete against, but just kind of finding something that, um, like, I don't know, fuels us. I guess guess it is just every time we step on the court, it's just, like, us versus them, and obviously we want to win for our team, so... I guess that's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah. Beach volleyball is such a funny dynamic because it's one of the only sports. It's like beach volleyball, maybe tennis and golf, where yeah. you play against your friends all yeah. the time. Oh, my gosh. And especially you know, because people always talk about the UCLA-USC rivalry, but not only have you played against them your whole life, mm-hmm. you've probably played with most of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it's sure. a funny dynamic because people always ask me from home because, like, Maryland, no one knows anything about beach volleyball. Mm-hmm. Like, well. You've played try three times this year. Like, how do you get up against one of your friends? I don't know. It's like playing your brother. Yeah. I, you just you I find know. a way. I know. <laughs> I know. That's what I was thinking. Like watching the AVP this past like season and everything. I'm like, how do you guys like? I I'm, you guys play each other. One wins, one loses. Then you go to I don't know the we bar, go, go the to the restaurant. Tent, exactly. Like, and you're like sitting in line. Like, you go ahead. You won. You get. You can get exactly. Line first. <laughs> it's so it's funny weird. to me. It's such a. I mean, again, it's just the beach volleyball sport is is just like such a great community and it's mm-hmm. cool that it's people are able to do that and like not hold the grudge or like not be able to be friends with them outside you know yeah like, i think that's pretty cool but what's it like after a ucla usc match <sighs> i mean i think it it ranges from person to person yeah. like um yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm a little bit competitive, so I, if I, <laughs> if I again, if I were to like lose, I'm gonna be like a little bit like upset about it. I'm not yeah. gonna want to go hug them. And right. I think um, Stein has kind of done a good job of like setting um, boundaries for our team. So like at tournaments or at like competitions and stuff, like we're barely allowed to like hang out with our family or like say hi to our family because he says like when we show up, like, this is business, like, we're coming here to play, and he relates it to, like, the NBA players are not going up and hugging their families in the stands and all that, but um, it's just, it kind of, like, locks us in, and, like, just, we focus on our team and, like, our team as a whole, and we're not really worried about any other teams, and um, I think that just makes it easier, so there's clear boundaries. You're not going to go up and run and hug someone from another team, so I don't know makes it easier i guess yeah it's it's always funny for me to just like see that dynamic because i'll know that people are are really good friends i remember um there's everyone has that team that it always comes down to that court Mm -hmm. you've been that court a couple times but i remember when therese cannon and sammy slater Uh were at usc Mm -hmm. it always came down to them against sponsor and lily yeah and then therese and sarah had gotten a third at avp chicago together yeah And, and therese is just the sweetest person in the world and then no matter what the result was, they, would, they wouldn't talk to each other immediately. Yeah. They, it, would, it would take some time. you got to let the emotions settle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's kind of me too. Once I let my emotions settle, then we're good. But yeah. like, yeah, I, I agree with that. Just sometimes tensions are high. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you are competitive, as you've mentioned. Yes. And I'd imagine that your family is probably quite competitive as well. Yes. Um, and I'm curious how that uh, manifested itself growing up. Just Were you just playing all kinds of games as oh, kids? Yeah. Yes. Um, so many, so many um, games and sports. But um, growing up, volleyball has always been in my family. My dad played mm-hmm. um, and my mom played. Uh, she did a bunch of stuff like track and she did volleyball and stuff, too. But she's a trainer now. Yeah, she's like a trainer, nutritionist, okay. fitness expert. She likes to call herself. It's <laughs> a good source to have. Yeah. As a mom. <laughs> it's quite funny, but um yeah, so growing up, I played soccer, volleyball, and mostly just indoor and beach. Um, once I hit, like, definitely freshman year of high school, I was both of them. Um, but, yeah, that definitely came from just a competitive um, athletic sports kind of family. And yeah. obviously, like, I was going to AVPs as, like, a like infant. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I've been around, especially volleyball, forever. But, yeah. yeah. Being who your dad was, did you feel any pressure to play volleyball? I get that question sometimes. And yeah. like, no, I, I actually, I won't, cause when I was playing soccer and volleyball, um, I was like 13 and cause we were, um, having, it was like competitive soccer and competitive volleyball. And we were mm-hmm. getting to the point where like I had to pick cause like the schedules were overlapping and all that. Um, and so, At like one point I was like, I kind of like, I want to play soccer because those were like my best friends like growing up. But like, I love volleyball. Like volleyball has always been like my true like passion and love. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was kind of a no brainer. But um, yeah, I actually the hardest decision was indoor or beach. Okay. So that was kind of interesting. And um, I remember having a conversation with my mom and she was, or yeah, she was like, Jaden, I feel like beach could be really good for you. Like, yeah. you know, and I was like, yeah, I could. And, but I, I love the team thing. I'm like, I don't know, but I am so happy I chose beach, especially with, with everything and how it's gone so far, but also just like my roots and it's just, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. for sure. When did you have to make the choice between indoor and beach? Cause they're different seasons yeah. in high school, right? And even in college, you still have some people who are doing both. Yeah, I um, played indoor for a club up until like 16s year, I think. Okay. Um, but I played um, indoor for high school up until my senior year. Okay. But I kind of wanted to stop playing club just because I wanted more time to train for beach. And it kind of was starting to get a little much. I was getting some injuries from indoor because um, I would like land on one foot and my hips were off. I was getting back problems. Yeah. So it kind of got to the point where I was like, you know what? Like, I know I want to play beach in college, so might as well like start actually training yeah. for beach only. Yeah. I never played indoor, but every time I watch film, I'm like, these guys are insane. Yeah. Because I started commentating for the Italian league. Nice. And I can't even follow the ball. <laughs> They're hitting it so hard. I'm like, one, anyone who digs a ball... It's either a gift from God yeah. or you're insanely good. It just moves so fast. <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, watching the uh, indoor national championships, I was like, how are these yeah. girls? And, like, Zoe Fleck, she was at um, UCLA before, so I know mm-hmm. her a little bit. But she is, was just crazy back there, like, yeah. digging. I'm like, how are you not trembling? I would have, like, <laughs> six, seven girls coming up and absolutely yeah. pounding it. I would be like, oh, my God. Yeah, so, and it sold out 17,000-seat arena. Oh, it's pretty crazy. cool. crazy, yeah. It's cool to see the state of, especially, I mean, beach is growing very fast. Yeah. But how big of a spectator sport college indoor is becoming. I know. It's I mean, the really fact cool. that they filled up a 17,000 seat arena so cool. two days in a row was awesome. Yeah, I know. I agree. It's cool to see it. Every, like Volleyball as a whole is just growing, which yeah. I think is awesome and yeah. is starting to get the recognition it deserves. Yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's been really interesting for me to just see what the, the kids of great athletes, how they sort of respond to being the kid of a great athlete right. because I'm, I'm good friends with Hagen Smith mm-hmm. and he never felt any pressure to follow in his dad's footsteps, but he yeah. grew up around volleyball and loves it. Mm-hmm. And you have, I mean, I don't think Karch's kids ever really got super in yeah. to volleyball. 
and then you know you're the daughter of a silver medalist mm-hmm. and you know just one of the most athletic blockers I've ever watched yeah and you're all into it mm-hmm. it's just interesting to see how different people respond to kind of the family name right so to speak totally yeah I I feel like it only just makes me love volleyball more like yeah. I love being at an AVP tournament and like running into like all of his old friends yeah. and like it's just so cool like to I don't know still like the amount of like love they had for him like I feel like it like still like rubs off on me and like I'll like run into someone and they'll be like oh my god I knew your dad and like they'll tell me like cool stories and I just think that just reflects on like beach volleyball community as a whole like I think that's so special and um yeah I think it'll live on forever so yeah do you ever watch uh any of his old film oh yeah totally we yeah there's some things on YouTube and stuff that we'll watch but yeah the uh the match uh from the Olympic trials Mm -hmm. is one of my favorite ones where him and uh Mike Dodd mm-hmm. just absolutely dominated. He had like eight blocks on Stokelos. Yeah. It's like, this is insane. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, why couldn't I get some of his height? Like, I'm like <laughs> five, seven and like and a half maybe. But ugh, yeah, I don't know. My sister um, also plays beach volleyball. Um, she's at ASU. She's a freshman this year. Okay. Um, but she definitely got more height okay. from him. She's like five ten, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Um, but she definitely, yeah. She she's more like long and lean. I'm more like short and muscular. But <laughs> I think we all we got like a bunch of good things from him for sure. How come she ended up going to Arizona State? Um. Well, I think, uh, like you were saying, like how. Um, like I, I wanted to maybe follow in his footsteps. Like she also loves volleyball, but I think she wanted a different story and path than me. Yeah. Um, so like, I think she like did like one volleyball camp at UCLA and was just like, Oh yeah, it's cool. But like, I think I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, she was looking at a bunch of different schools, but ultimately came down to ASU just cause she loves the coaching staff and, um, the girls were super welcoming and cool to her and, um, yeah, so she had her first semester and she nice. has nothing but good things to say about the program. And so I'm excited to see yeah. what so she does. So this will be her true freshman season? Yeah. It's exciting. I know. Is yeah. it, uh, is it still Brad Keenan? Yeah. And is it Paula Riza? Yeah. It's just yeah. A freaking love I Paula. Know. <laughs> I know. Um, I don't know them too well, but uh, yeah, every person I run into that knows them just says such good things about them. So I'm really excited uh, for her to be in good hands and yeah. we'll get some good coaching and yeah. So. That'd be fun to have a Whitmarsh Whitmarsh battle. Oh, I know. Seriously. My mom's like <laughs> dreading it. Like, <laughs> it's like, what am I going to do? But um, yeah, this is actually the first year that we actually are like overlapping in school because like when I was a senior in high school or when I was a senior in college, she was a senior in high school. So like yeah. we've never been able to actually play against each other. So yeah, yeah definitely at Pac-12s or whatever, when we play AS- ASU, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Could but. do grad transfer at Arizona State. I know. Marsh, Rip Marsh, I you got know. one blocker, one defender. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All lean and muscular. Oh, Good yeah. Combo. I know. Totally. <laughs> but Where else were you looking at? For college? Um, well, UCLA was always my dream school. So once that was an option, it was like kind of it. But I was also looking at USC for a little bit. Um, and a couple of other schools like Cal Poly was one of the first ones to reach out to me. Um, and a couple others like Arizona. But I just knew that I wanted to be close-ish to home. And I feel like the um, distance from San Diego to LA was kind of perfect for yeah. me. And, um, there was also a lot more factors that played into why I choose or chose UCLA, but, um, yeah, UCLA was always it. Yeah. What's it like? I'm curious. Cause like your guys' generation, did you grow up watching like a Todd Rogers and a Stein Metzger? Yeah. Was it I, Well, funny? I, I, I know I did. I don't know about other people, but I'm sure yeah. they did. Was it funny for you to be watching these guys on the AVP and then all of a sudden Stein is giving you a call? Exactly. Once you go to my school, Todd Rogers is calling you up. Once you go to his school, that had to have been a funny moment. For sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I there are so many coaches in co- the college level that are just absolute legends, and it's so cool to like have girls from youth go to – 
college left and right and just like get the like experience and knowledge like poured into them and just see how like their game like develops and how much like just good coaching can help you Mm -hmm. it's cool to see for sure um I feel like I definitely got that from Stein and Jenny um but just seeing like my game my freshman year to now it's just completely transformed for the better um but like that just came from like their like good teaching and like um me being able to like like ask questions and then like explain things further and then obviously competing against my teammates like day in and day out yeah. I'm like competing against like the best of the best that's only helped too yeah what yeah. have you seen specifically improve from freshman to graduate senior year yeah um definitely my offense I think like um like passing has been something that is something I'm always working on but has been something that I've like been pretty good at but my offense my freshman year I just would want to like muscle up and just hit and that to just ended up not working for me, especially once you go to another le- like a higher yeah. level and you're playing against like good blockers who will just absolutely stuff you and like, <laughs> make yeah. you feel terrible. But um, just being able to start transforming my offense and like being smarter and like having more shots in my pocket has been super helpful. And then like just knowing that I need to like pass well to like be in a good, a good position to side out has yeah. been obviously super helpful as well. Yeah. What are some of the, the shots that you've added that you might not have had, or is it just your high lines a little better and your cut shots a little sharper? Um, I like kind of both, yeah. but like being able to pass in like a specific location and then like run a set out of okay. that and like being just like in a better position, um, with like my, like, um, approach and like where I take off. And so I'm not broad jumping. Cause that will just like decrease my like height. Um, but yeah, just being able to like make my shots like more crisp and like mm-hmm. going for sidelines more, just more comfortably rather than just like hitting like right to the defender. Yeah. With how fast college women improve i'm sure if you watch film from your freshman year you probably get a good laugh out of oh it. my gosh I'm like <laughs> stein why did you want me like, what is happening but yeah no for sure it's and it's cool to see like my my freshmen and like how they are already transforming and like just by like teaching them our like setting plays and like the way we want to like be aggressive from the like service line and like just seeing like people make a change so quick and I think that's cool to see too like seeing my teammates make those changes as well yeah yeah what are you studying um right now I'm my like master's degree is called code or transformative coaching and leadership okay and it's kind of under like John Wooden's philosophies and stuff so um it's a lot about leadership which I think is really cool and coaching but also just like kind of being a good person so yeah. <laughs> it's been it's really important. yeah it's been <laughs> actually really cool um to to be surrounded by like other athletes that I wouldn't necessarily be like close with from other teams and then just um really cool professors and coaches like um Miss Val was uh the gymnastics coach for a long time she was amazing um I have her coming up next quarter so I can't wait for that nice. one but yeah, it's been really cool. And then undergrad, I did sociology. So yeah, yeah. Well, your men's basketball team is kicking ass. Oh yeah, I know. The one Maryland game because I went to University of Maryland. Yeah. And the I watched two games this year, and the first one I watched, I was like, all right, Maryland's pretty good. They're playing UCLA, and mm-hmm. they just got hammered. <laughs> it's like we're down thirty at halftime. I uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I I think the um, like UCLA athletics as a whole is just always entertaining, but yeah. Um, definitely the year that they made it to the final four, that was a huge for us. It was crazy. Cause people they were, were running in the, the streets. Game. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, people were like running the streets and like, we're celebrating. It was like so fun. I'll never forget it, but big sports schools are so fun. Yeah. It's I just, know. especially cause UCLA has had such a tradition. I mean, you mentioned John Wooden with yeah. basketball Yeah. and now they're, they're back. I know. <laughs> it's gotta be it's fun. It's good to see. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. love it. My Bruins. Yeah. Have you you haven't played a ton of AVPs? You popped in a couple qualifiers. Is that something that you are looking to do? Yeah, I think I'll I'll play in some AVPs like maybe this upcoming summer. Um, yeah, when I was when I was little, I was always like, yeah, I'm gonna play professional beach volleyball. But yeah. now I'm a bit older. I just I think 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to necessarily pursue it as a full-time career, but volleyball will always be something that I'm going to be a part of because it's my, my love, and my passion. But, um, yeah, I'll play in some AVPs and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any plans on what you want to do with, uh, with your masters? Um, yeah, I, so, well, I coaching, I'm always going to coach. I've been coaching, um, like private lessons and stuff forever. Yeah. So definitely we'll do that. Um, but starting to get into sports broadcasting a little nice. bit. Nice. Yeah. Um, I haven't really done anything necessarily yet, but I've been doing some things to maybe like help prepare me. Like, um, Amory Anderson hosts this like virtual broadcasting workshop thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I did that like a month ago or two months ago and, um, it was like three sessions and she kind of just like spilled her experiences, her 33 years of experiences. Yeah. So it was cool. I learned a lot of like her tips and tricks and like how she prepares for a game. And so, I don't know. We'll see. Well, if you're looking to get into broadcasting international beach volleyball, I can set you up, get you contact if you want. I would we love need that. some more. Please. I would love that. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Been a productive podcast. <laughs> no, I'm like, that's a wrap. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love but it. The, uh, I was talking about how there were, there were two matches that I watched that were two of the most intense matches. The first one was uh, you and Riley yeah. against LSU. The other one was you and Devin mm -hmm. against Stetson. Oh, gosh. And yeah. I was watching that. Me and Tim Brewster were on our way to a tournament in Cuba. And oh, we were yeah. laying over in the that. Miami airport. Yeah. And so we were streaming it on my phone. And Tim's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't watch. <laughs> so he's pacing up and down the airport. Out. Yeah. That that was crazy because that was a single elimination round. Oh, yeah. What was that single elim like? Oh, my God. It was terrifying. And, <laughs> I bet it was. Oh, it was absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Especially because, like, there's so much, like, hype and there's so much nerves and, like, like that, um, like, location being in Gulf Shores and, like, there's just so much pressure and especially like the first game jitters and all that. Like I think it definitely hit our team, um, especially being like a higher ranked team. Like, um, yeah, started off our team started a little, a little cold, yeah. we were a little nervous, but, um, yeah, it, it, it definitely is a lot of pressure, especially when it's single elimination. Yeah. And they're changing the format next year or for this upcoming season to the whole thing being single elimination. No way. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. I hate it more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, it's just like, it's just going to go by so fast. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's only a, it's a three day tournament and, um, yeah, single elimination all the way through. So do they say why? What the reason? No, was? I don't, I don't understand. I wish they would like drag it out a little bit more to make it more like, I don't know, suspenseful and like maybe more people would watch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think they're definitely like, like trying different things out, especially because last year was the it was like a five day thing because it was the first day was a single elimination and then there was like a random day off and then yeah. the the rest of the three days was just playing it out. But yeah. I don't know. I'm they're, just such a double limb purist. Me too. I hate pool play. I, I know. hate single limb. Me too. Just make it. Divisible by four and run a double limb and I agree. all your problems are solved. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, whatever. It's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good tournament. I'm just excited to see how like even just the regular season pans out and like the teams that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be like top runners are the ones that usually surprise you. Yeah. So yeah. Are they keeping it at is it still sixteen? Sixteen, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know a single limb if they upped it. A little bit more. I know. See, and then that's another thing. I thought maybe they would change the right. amount of teams, but I think it's still 16. Yeah. And if that, I mean, golly, if you can't run a 16 team double limb in three days with college kids, it's not, you're not 75 year old grandmother. <laughs> I like, know. You can play that many matches. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> Come on, guys. Right? It's going to be really interesting just to, because like even um, last year with the one round of single elimination, like there were like close games and there yeah. were some upsets and like, we almost had a huge upset, obviously, the sets and game. And, like, I just think back. It was, like, FSU, Cal Poly, and, like, it was it came down to one court and yeah. then FSU won. But just, like, so many things can happen in a single elimination. And there's going to be some upsets. So, yeah. Yeah, I think if there if there is a format where the best teams should still come out of a single limb, I think the college beach is a good one. Yeah. But if it were... 
if it were like the AVP were to do just a single limb, yeah, it would be nuts because anyone can get hot for 45 minutes. I know. And that, beat anyone. I totally agree with you. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah. So it's a bit nerve wracking, but that's why we got to prepare for it now, I guess. Yeah. Just like put, keep putting each other in, in pressure situations during practice just to like you know, feel that more and experience it yeah. as much as we can right. until we get to that moment. But yeah. I could see Stein telling some of you guys like, all right, all of you just drop the second set. Mm-hmm. We want to simulate this pressure come later. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Like get those third, third games in. Yeah. <laughs> so, cause it's hard to simulate that. I remember reading a story on, um, it was a world cup preview and they were talking about PKs mm-hmm. and how, most coaches don't even bother practicing them because they said there's no way we can simulate this pressure. Yeah. Like what we do in practice isn't going to translate at all because of the magnitude of the moment. It's true. It's incomparable. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that is true, but I feel like the more you can try and like I mean, you can you can make pressure situations obviously not probably to the same magnitude, but yeah. it's important to like try to experience it as much as you can. So once it gets to that moment, you like can have different ways of like uh, coping, I guess, like with yeah. the amount of pressure, but yeah, I don't know. How do you handle them? What's your, what's your mind doing at 10, 10 in the third set against Stetson? Yeah. And I don't know if that was the score. I know it was 15, 13 ended up being, but yeah, I think it was 10, 10 on the switch. I'm pretty sure. But, um, definitely, uh, our team practices like breathing and like trying to get, in like a Zen mode. But, um, yeah, I think I'll take some deep breaths. And the biggest thing for me though, is just like staying connected with my partner Mm -hmm. and just kind of like, like eliminating everything else. Um, like trying not to like, trying to like block out the noise and like the yelling and, and just like staying present, I guess is like the biggest thing for me. Um, and what I've like experienced. So I would say that. Yeah. Yeah. And are you and Dev running it back? Do we know? Um, as of right now, it should be. Um, okay. She got shoulder surgery in June. So okay. she's been in recovery process, recovery mode for the past couple of months. But um, yeah, she, every single day she's progressing. And so she should be back for season. And um, I think we would both love to play with each other again. Yeah. So we'll see how things fall. But um, yeah, that should be the case. How much does your guys' opinion influence what Stein and Jenny do? Um, usually, uh, usually Stein and Jenny will make the decision and then will like talk to us and be like, how do you like this? Like, how are you guys working together? Because you could have like the best defender and the best blocker together, but like the way that you guys flow on the court just like doesn't work for some reason. It's just like chemistry or whatever. But, um, I would say like they obviously respect our opinions and like they will make changes if they have to, but, um, yeah, sometimes like they don't see things that like maybe like the players will see. So Mm -hmm. they've like made an open, um, communicating like platform. So like if we do maybe have an idea of like wanting to play with someone, like we feel comfortable enough to ask them, which I think is pretty cool. And that's what actually happened last year. Devin and I weren't together in like, um, off season and they were putting us with different players and stuff, but we had played together like, for fun and like practices and things like that. And we were like, why don't you guys like give us a shot playing at practice like one time just to like see how it goes. And we had a really good practice and then they kept us together. So there you go. Yeah. That worked out. Go. Yeah, exactly. Is, uh, is Abby Van Winkle back or is she, yeah. I feel like she's been there for eight years. <sighs> it seems that way. Yeah. No, she's my year. She's okay. my year. And, um, I feel like maybe it feels like that cause she started her freshman year. Probably. But, um, Yep, she's back. We have Tessa Van Winkles. We have two Van Winkles. Um, yeah, gosh, we got a lot of people. You guys are loaded. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a fun year. It really is. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> and yeah. when's – do you know the schedule yet? Yeah, we have, our, we have our schedule. I think our first game is like f- February 25th or something. We're okay. in Hawaii. So that'll That's be fun. awesome. Yeah. And I know Stein loves going back to Hawaii, being from there and everything. Oh, yeah. I know. It's actually a huge, huge blessing for us. We're like, yeah, let's go back to your hometown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we were just out there for Thanksgiving. So we awesome. had a little preseason fall tournament there. And then we'll go back in February. For I always our... forget that you guys have that mini little fall season. I know. How'd that go? 
It was good. This was like a a big year for uh, fall tournaments, and they actually like implemented a little bit of like a pairs tournament and in uh that's in Alabama, right? Huntsville? Yeah. Yep, they did Alabama. They did a few other ones too. There was um, the Manhattan one, and there was like three, uh, three pairs from each school um, that would compete in a pairs tournament. While yeah. like there was a whole another tournament, like a duels tournament, going on like at the same beach. Okay, so it was kind of interesting. It was like, a, like you gotta a be, you got to be deep. You yeah, have eight teams. I know, right? Jeez. So like a lot of the schools that like didn't have that many teams, it was hard because it was like, right. okay, well, I don't, we don't have enough players playing the duel if like our pairs are playing. So, um, yeah, it was kind of interesting though. It was cool. Did you go to Huntsville? No. Okay. No, we had um, Abby playing with um, uh, Jess. Yeah, I think it was Jess Smith. Okay. She's a sophomore this year. And then um, Lexi playing with a freshman, um, Maggie Boyd. Okay. So, yeah. Because I'm, I'm curious. I got to talk to Lexi how that went. Yeah. Just, that was the first year they've done it, right? Yeah. They, um, they said it was good. They said it was a lot on their bodies. I think it was like a three-day thing. And, like, the weather was crazy. And yeah. um, it was a, a kind of a lot, especially for fall. But, um, I mean, again, it's cool to get to compete like in fall against all these teams and like see the other teams like level and yeah yeah they keep having all these huge tournaments in alabama i know who knew i know <laughs> yeah we go out there in march uh yeah for uh i think we play like the lsu fsu like a bunch of and those teams uab hosts that one right i think so okay yeah but i know who would have thought alabama is a spot, but yeah. it's been and a spot. Gulf Shores is beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's so pretty. I actually feel bad for the teams in the future that aren't going to get to go there because it's going to, it's what going is to it? Huntington, Huntington. In two years, I think. Exactly. I think that's lame. Sorry. Well, I think, <laughs> I, I think, uh, I think more people will probably we'll go. show up. I think I it'll agree. be an easier uh, sell for ESPN. Totally. And like a lot more people will attend and there'll be more. Probably like fans and stuff, especially yeah. for a bunch of like teams down here. But I don't know. I just think the feeling of like Gulf Shore. Maybe I'm biased, but like the white sand and like just Gulf Shores, Alabama, has just like been such a like I grew up watching it. So right. it's like I don't know. I and Gulf Shores has been synonymous with national championships, mm-hmm. and it's just it's very cool with, that the NCAA has been able to build that mm-hmm. in. Of all places, Gulf Shores, I know. which is close to nothing. I know. But it's like the sweetest little town. Like, <laughs> like we go to the same place for lunch like almost every single day, and we're like, by the end of it, we're like, okay, let's switch. Yeah. But, but it's just so cool that, like, Gulf Shores is able to, like, just have that every year. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know. I, I love I love Gulf Shores. But, yeah. I don't know. That's me. Well, let's hope you get back there one more time. I know. Let's go. <laughs> Maybe two. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jaden, is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything no, we might have missed? I'm good. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, where can our listeners find you and follow you? Um, Instagram, Jaden Whitmarsh. I think Twitter is the same. Um, yeah, it's my main ones. Awesome. Yeah. Good luck this year. Thanks for coming on. Thank you Glad for having me. Glad we can get me. you up here. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing you throughout the UCLA season. For sure. All right. Thank you. Shoots. <laughs>